Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and this is a home line load center. This load center can be used as a sub panel, but it can be converted to a main panel by adding a main breaker. Therefore, it's called convertible. I'll put a link in my video description for my video called What is a Convertible Load Center and How is it Converted? But my topic today is going to be how are ground bars installed in home line panels. These are the ground bars that come uninstalled with this load center. This one has nine terminals and this one has 15 terminals plus an included lug terminal in case you would like to convert this panel to a main panel. Although these two come with a panel, you have a choice of several ground bars that will fit this panel. The number after PK indicates how many terminals the ground bar has. These ground bars only cost between 10 and 20 bucks, so you might as well use the one that fits your needs. By the way, all of these ground bars also fit on the more professional quality Square D QO line of load centers. Other companies like Eaton and Siemens have their own ground bars, so be sure and buy the right one for your brand of panel. On the left side of this home line load center, you will see a ground symbol. Also, you'll see a hole for a screw and two nubs, which can be used to install a ground bar. Now moving down the panel to the bottom of the load center, which is farthest away from the main lugs, we find another ground symbol and two more nubs and another hole for a screw. Then on the opposite side of the load center, you'll find another grounding symbol, two more nubs and another screw hole. Also, Homeline provides areas on both sides of the load center where you could use two screw holes and no nubs. The reason for all this versatility in both the size of the ground bars and where you can place the ground bars on three sides of the load center is so that you can place your ground bars in position where they're not going to be interfering with the running of service entrance cables, feeder cables, branch circuit wires and the like. Here's an example where the ground bar has been well placed. Here's an example where the ground bar has been poorly placed. We have the feeder cables going right over the top of the ground bar. This can cause chafing of the feeder cables, which is a safety issue. And it's going to be difficult to attach all your various ground wires with the cables basically being in the way. If you install your ground bar with two nubs and one screw, then screw C on this little diagram needs to be torqued down to 30 pound inches. If you use two screws and no nubs, you still need to tighten those screws, that'd be a C in the diagram, to 30 pound inches. If you're attaching the ground bar to an area with two nubs and one screw hole, line up your three holes on the ground bar, uh, two of them on the nubs and one of them right above the, the hole for the screw and put this screw into the ground bar and screw it into the back of your load center. Now, I have a Weha torquing screwdriver, so I put it at 30 pound inches and just tighten it down until it clicks. Then you'll have a properly installed ground bar. Install as many ground bars as is necessary. Just make sure that they're not in the way of your wiring. Use the proper size ground bar, torque it down to the proper specification, and definitely place your ground bar in a convenient and safe location. I'll put links in my video description for the Weha torquing screwdriver and other popular torque screwdrivers and torque wrenches. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.